Yes, okay, so next to Boost. At this moment, February, I will be doing some different things in different groups. <clears throat> First thing is rhythms and dance. That's something new I am starting in the public group. It's called Kalida Online. And that's a group for everyone who has ever studied with me or wants to study with me. So you will probably already have access. If not, go to uh, or just type Kalida Online in in the Facebook search and you'll see the group with a heart. That's the one where you can catch me every first Wednesday of the month for just chatting about life and dance and anything. And every last Wednesday of the month for rhythms and dance. And that's a little series for Facebook friends. It's free that you can just join. Every month I will have a different rhythm. I think I will start with the short ones and work my way to the longer ones and we will move to them. So that's for me the most important thing for Boost, for everything I do this year. It's about movement and uh, how it centers your mind and how it uh, helps you also emotionally. So that's my message for Boost. If you can um, turn inwards with the exercises that we do, your life will change because you will find more opportunities to move more freely. You will be more calm. You'll be able to breathe. Maybe you will have less pain. So you are taking care of yourself. If you take the boost classes, you are doing something good for yourself. And I think especially in these times, but actually always, this is so, so, so important. If you can take care of yourself and if you have the skills and the knowledge to take care of yourself, this is something that's valuable for life. And also you can transfer this to other people. Um, I didn't know that this was so important until I didn't have a choice. I was in pain, as some of you know, for years because I fell on my tailbone when I was 19, which is more than 20 years ago. <laughs> it's more than 20 years ago. Oh my God. So when I was 19, I had to work in a butcher store to pay for my college. <laughs> so uh, I, I was independent at a young age and I had to pay for my own living while I was studying. So I had to work hard every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday I was working. And one of the things we had to do was clean everything on Saturday. So I was carrying heavy trays, already strong, and scooting around while others were scrubbing the floor. And as it happened, we had these uh, klompen, I don't know the English word, clogs, yes, clogs with rubber soles, which made it easy to walk around all day so you didn't get pain. So I was very fast, scooting around, carrying something heavy in front of me, and uh, they were scrubbing the floor with foam, and I walked over a grid, so an iron grid, and the slippery soap, my clogs, and my speed that I had, and the extra weight, uh, that collisioned, so I skipped, my feet went up from under me. This is my booty. My booty went down with the extra added force of the heavy weight I was carrying and I slammed on my tailbone very hard. So what happened then was really weird. So for a moment, I could not sense my body anymore. It was like it was disconnected. I was still conscious, I think, more or less, but um, I couldn't feel my body. I thought I was... I thought that was it. I was lame. I could not move anymore. And I think, hi Karen, <laughs> welcome to this dramatic part of the Q&A. And I think what happened is that my nervous system had a kind of shock from this um, fall on my tailbone with extra weight. Um, so after a second or two, I could breathe and I could feel my body again. And then I cried. I cried so hard because I thought, <laughs> I thought, I thought that's it. My life is over and I, I have to be carried out. And uh, that's what I get for, for working hard. So I could move. I was okay. I had a little bruise where my tailbone is at. And I felt a bit, you know, shaky and uh, emotional. But I was fine. I thought. I thought I was fine. And I was so thankful that I could just walk out <laughs> and uh, take care of myself for a couple of days. And I was okay. And this was in my early 20s. I, I wasn't doing much sports. I was doing a little bit of uh, Taibo. I don't know if you remember Taibo, but that was my hobby back then. And I studied. I studied informatics. So after that, on I went with my studies. On I went with physical work, which kept me fit. And on I went with my hobbies. I started doing um, a full-time IT job at 20, so the year after. And 
I, I didn't move a lot until I found belly dance. So at 23, that's three years after this happened, I started belly dancing and I was so happy because it gave me energy. I loved the music, the rhythms. Shift to Tell you was the first rhythm that I learned from my teacher. And I wanted to start belly dancing because of Shakira and this and the rhythm came together. So it's one of my first loves is rhythm and movement. Anyway, all was fine. I was learning belly dance and I was dancing, I was happy. And over time, I started getting uh, aches when I was doing uh, administration work or sitting for a long time. My right hip began to hurt a little. And it was not bad, but it didn't go away. So I was stretching it and stretching it more and more. And even though I was stretching it and the stretching felt like it was useful, like a nice um, pulling at the part that was sore, it didn't um, remove the tightness. Also, I was pretty stiff because I never learned how to um, stretch myself properly or safely, but uh, I just thought it's me, I am just not flexible. What actually happened was the tailbone had probably twisted a little bit, maybe even it's broken, it can get broken without you knowing it, and my pelvis had slightly twisted, and that was slowly, slowly making my spine twist with it. So I was getting a scoliosis at 20, and by the time I was 25, it already started hurting my hip and my pelvis was shifted, but I didn't know. I thought I was just sitting too much and I had this habit of sitting like this at work. So <laughs> probably it was a bit of both. Five years later, I started getting uh, pain in my shoulder and my lower back, I had a sway back. I always had it a little because I was used to seated, seated studying seated work and when I get up, <laughs> it's like my legs are still bent, so my hip flexors were were like this, and then when I stand, it pulls the lower back. And then I wanted to stand up straight, so I had a kind of an S shape like that <clears throat> in the back. Let me get a sip of water. Let me hydrate <coughs> for a moment. I've been talking so much. Also, I have a sip of water. Cheers. So, so I had a bit of scoliosis or sway back uh, from the side because of sitting a lot, but I was developing a sideways scoliosis over time, still from this one incident where I fell on my tailbone, twisted my tailbone and or pelvis a little bit, and then just kept on going with life. Every step that I made, my one side was a bit in front of the other and it just became worse and worse and worse over time. So 15 years later, it was at the worst point. By that time, anytime I moved my neck for driving, for looking, I could get whenever, um, how to say it, that the neck just gets stuck and you cannot move anything. And these muscles here, they were, they were connected almost like that. So they were like thick, trying to keep my head in place because it all hurt. My hip pain was getting worse. I had elbow pain and shoulder pain also, the same, that didn't go away. And it started to come on the other side as well. So I was getting less and less mobile. I didn't know what to do. I bought stretching courses that hurt me because I wanted to stretch everything out that was tightening up because I didn't know what caused this. So what I did was one, panic, <laughs> two, lose all my confidence in teaching and dancing because even though I was doing competitions, traveling for workshops. By that time I was doing almost every weekend traveling, part-time still working in IT and teaching 11 weekly classes. I was doing a lot, but I had to do less and less and less and less because everything started to hurt and everything was getting stuck and I didn't know how to get out of it. So, <laughs> so what happened is I kept looking. I went to a doctor when my neck was stuck for the manyest time in hopes they could tell me what to do because I was 35 at the time. So that was like seven years ago. That was my lowest point. I was washing my hair over the bathtub because my hair was still very long and I could not get up. I couldn't get up. So I had to roll on the floor on the bath mat and then get up. And I thought this is, that was my low point. I was thinking at that moment, laying on the floor, that this is not normal for a 35 year old dancer or person to not be able to get up if I bend my head. 
Uh, so, so I figured maybe, maybe see a doctor. And I went to a doctor and what the doctor did was from two meters distance, not even looking at me, saying, okay, you'll get um, cortisone in your neck. So, <laughs> so I was like, whoa, no, I did not want that as uh, the solution if he didn't even took the time to ask me what caused it. Because I knew that it started from my hip somehow in the back of my mind. I knew it was not just the neck because also my back hurt and he just wanted to fix my neck. So I thought, no, 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 no. I will first try to see if I can help myself, even if it takes longer. And I also, I didn't have money because I couldn't teach anymore because I was in pain. I couldn't work for long anymore. I had to go uh, part, part time. And uh, all this made me very financially limited, also stressed. So I was in pain, in stress, poor, <laughs> poor, even though uh, my husband also has a job, but I, I didn't want to live off him. I wanted to, you know, contribute to our whole household. So I went to the doctor. Doctor wanted to give me an injection in my neck without checking me. So I said, no, that's when I started educating myself. So I went on the internet. I looked up all, I Googled neck pain. I Googled hip pain. I Googled shoulder pain. And I looked for the videos that um, spoke to me and those that spoke to me or did something were the ones that moved me, the ones where I had to move. Anyway, those gave me a little bit of a spark of an idea that maybe something can be done and maybe I don't need to get operated or whatever, but I still did not know what was going on. I just knew I was in pain and I needed to do something. It's a very good motivator, you know, chronic pain. I know uh, some of you are suffering as well. Maria, um, Vanessa and also Johanna, she has struggled through so much and I think it's the movement that's saving her. I also, I bought myself anatomy books. I will add the link to, uh, <laughs> to um, the boost class of today of, I think it's anatomy in motion. It's a very good uh, book by Franklin Method, The Anatomy of Dance, that's it. That shows you in dance movements, in ballet, which muscles move and work together how. So that's how I got interested. That's how I got so geeky about movement. Until my 35th year, I just learned everything I could about belly dance, but not the anatomy under it, not how movement can help you. All that came because I was in pain and I wanted to, f to learn my way out of it somehow without without getting uh without losing too much money because i just didn't have the opportunity and i didn't want to do anything invasive just yet <laughs> i still had hope it came uh it came from somewhere so it can go to somewhere by that time so the things that worked for me were the first thing that worked for me was um franklin method it didn't fix it but it gave me a little bit more movement and connection. I could, I could notice that when I put my hand on a place, how sore it was because I didn't have any feeling connection anymore to certain places. My neck, I couldn't tell it was tense until I poked it with my fingers. Then it was really sore, but I did not have any connection to the neck. So whenever a yoga teacher would say, imagine your neck, uh, feel this, this, I didn't know what to do because I didn't feel those parts. Those parts were just holding themselves and they get uh, sedated. You don't feel the parts that are hurting. It's your body way of protecting you from being in too much pain. You will feel certain parts, but other parts they just disconnect until you reawaken them, which is something we do in Boost as well. Okay, well, we're, okay, I'm telling the whole story. Now that I've started, I will continue this. I think it's a good way to start Boost. So you know why, why I am doing this and why I think this is so, so important to share it with others. I'm actually, I started teaching this to help my family because in my family, we have a lot of people with um, uh, joint pain or um, problems from working hard and uh, repetitive motions. And for instance, my sister has her wrist operated. My other sister has uh, shoulder issues. My, uh, my stepfather has knee issues. And I want to help them all. <laughs> I want to help them all. And this keeps me motivated to keep learning. And I, I do the same for you guys. You, my boosties, are like my extended family. And it also motivates me to take better care of myself because I have to take my own advice also. And I am for you. <laughs> I see it this, this way. I learn as much as I can. 
I try it on myself. I am the guinea pig. <laughs> and whatever works for me or for my husband, I sometimes experiment on him or on my family, I share it. And whatever I see works for participants, I share it wider. So this way, hopefully, this knowledge that there's a lot you can do by listening to your body, by doing the things that other people have searched that are non-invasive. There's a lot of wisdom that is not widely enough known, I think, and I hope this will change. I hope more people will get to know uh, Monica Volkmar, who was the one that got me out of this loop because I, yes, okay, the next phase. So I was in pain, I was looking up everything I could about anatomy, about movement. It helped a little, I knew there was the solution, but I was still in pain. So what to do? Second thing that I did is I found a great practitioner who did the biggest damage control. So I was not able to do exercises because I was in pain. So I couldn't do Monica's program comfortably. So what I did is I did a combination. I found a practitioner who, it was called orthomanual therapy, but now it's mucoskeletal something. It is a, it is a profession in the Netherlands. It's not, it, doesn't exist in Germany, doesn't exist in Belgium, as far as I know. But what he does is, it's a, it's a him, Dr. Nix, he's, he's amazing. He talks to you. So you go there and he asks you, okay, what is your injury history, like Monica does? And he, he asks you to go back very far. And that's the first time that I realized it might have been the tailbone fall. So just his questioning, I had different things. As a kid, I fell on my knees all the time. I stumbled. I had balls from, you know, dodgeball <laughs> hit me in the head. And I think I broke my nose as a kid on my face. And that's why it's still, still crooked. Also having uh, ortho or dental blocks or things for, to put your teeth straight, it can get your jaw in a kind of lock because it's kind of traumatic and that can also translate in. So anything that you have lived through can have an echo that is somewhere stuck in your body and your body is still protecting you. So if you want to change any of that, you need to feel safe. If you don't feel safe, your body will hold you. And that's why we do the Tuesdays to get you to calm down, to get your nervous system to calm down so you are ready for whatever change may now be possible. Because you might be healed more than you know, but your body is still not sure that it can let you move in those directions that it's still protecting. So that's why we do the Tuesdays. The Mondays are to actually use those fibers in this new uh, way. And sometimes relaxation doesn't happen until you feel a difference. That's why I flipped it and I put the activation first to make you realize there's something going on and then the relaxation to deepen it. <laughs> so that's, that's why we have boost this way. Anyway, I went to a practitioner, Dr. Nix, and the orthomanual therapy is, <clears throat> first he checks your history, then he checks your uh, legs and back. So you have to stand and sit and he sees, uh, sometimes they say yes, one leg is shorter than the other, but usually it's the pelvis kind of tilted that pulls the leg a bit more forward than the other. It's very seldom that the leg is really shorter than the other. It's usually your body holding it differently. So don't let yourself be told that you need a leg lengthening until you've tried everything else to release whatever might be holding it in a weird position. Anyway, that's something he checks also. And then he checks your spine. He checks what is where. And then he presses next to each vertebra and he tells you, you feel this one, yes? You feel this one, yes? This one, no. And it's exactly like that. The ones where he says yes, I think he can feel if it's shifted, it's sore where he presses. The ones that are in line are not sore. So your body knows when it is in the place it's designed to be and it knows when it's off. It just doesn't know how to let go. Yes, it was still holding myself in the position that I grew into in 15 years time. So what he did is he shifts the vertebrae, he puts them back in place also the neck and it's kind of awkward it's not um it's not uh, the cracking it's not that it's it's very carefully shifting the vertebra and then you have to uh, move yourself you move yourself to realign and then afterwards for the first time in a very 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 long time i was almost pain-free so then i realized okay my vertebrae were misaligned I didn't know that before because of this fall and it can be healed, it can be fixed. 
Only thing that happened was because my muscles were so tight for so many years in this direction, after a week, my vertebrae were being pulled back into the old position. So I knew I had to do two things. One, relax my body enough to, <laughs> to let go of the pulling and then to have them put back in line. And then the third thing came along and that's what settled it. Strengthen the parts that are letting go, that are not holding, so that my body can align itself. So I needed, I needed the whole team to get, uh, <laughs> to get pain free, but it worked. It was like a kind of miracle because I couldn't do anything and now I can do everything. I can do ballet, I can do uh, taekwondo, <laughs> the kicking, I can do a uh, sword class, I do have to stretch afterwards, I can do modern, I can do floor bar and I can belly dance again and I can teach and I'm not in pain and I can sit at the computer then I feel a bit sore but I can work myself out of it so <laughs> long 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 story short it is possible for most people uh, it does depend you might have injuries you might have injuries that are uh, that cannot be uh, completely healed but it can always get better there's always potential for movement, especially if that's something you have not explored yet. If any of the movements, if any of the things we do in Boost are beneficial in any way, then there's hope that there's more that can be done. And I may not be able to do everything, but at least you will have a start, a uh, kind of spark, something that can inspire you to look further. If your feet are the problem, go for um, Anatomy in Motion, Gary Ward's work, and start with that. And then after that, you will have more information to go maybe to a practitioner, maybe someone like Dr. Nix who can put your spine in alignment. And then you go to Monica or you use exercises that you know are helping you to stay aligned, to become more centered. And bit by bit by bit, this may take time. For me, it took a process of three, four years, but it became progressively better. There were times where I had little fallbacks or where I, uh, hurt myself by carrying something and then doing an awkward movement, but I always knew I could I could get it in fixed again or I could help myself again. I became more knowledgeable in what I had to do or who I had to go to to uh, get out of pain. So <laughs> so that's that's what's behind the boost. Uh, my journey from um, from not knowing anything about anatomy to being in pain to having to learn as much as I could to getting help from outside and then everything I learned from them, everything that helped me, I started applying it to me, started applying it to my family and to my friends and to my husband. And from that came the urge and the inspiration to also put it in my workshops at first. This was quite experimental. And also I was kind of uh, worried that it might be too weird because I was used to just teaching belly dance, choreographies or technique. But this was what I was passionate about and I'm becoming more and more so. So this is, I think, my mission to change through movement, to show how much you can do with movement and to, uh, to give you back this body wisdom that we are all supposed to have, that, we, that this is what we are supposed to get, I think, in school as knowledge, as knowledge, how to help yourself, how to not be dependent on uh, medication, operation, or at least have options before you go that route that uh, that's usually there's no real way to undo what is done then you can still get better but it's it's hard to to recover from invasive surgery completely you can do a lot still but um, if there's an opportunity to do good things for yourself next to that or before that take it take this opportunity and also spread this word to whoever you know uh, might need it. And it doesn't need to be people who are in pain. I think just for dancers, anyone who dances, and even I now, <laughs> that I'm not suffering anymore daily, I still get benefit from the exercises that I do. They, they also work on a more refined uh, level. They, they make my, I say, movement quality becomes better if you can feel your movement, if you can feel your wrists, if you can feel your fingers, they immediately move differently. If you can feel your neck, it'll lengthen. If you can feel your body and then, for instance, listen to rhythms, which we will do on the Wednesdays, last Wednesday of each month, then it all comes together again uh, as we are designed to move. 
And as we are designed to live, we are creatures that are created to move. Our bodies function, our minds function when we move. If we don't move, we get atrophy or we get uh, uh, tissue that gets stuck and we get clouded minds. So if we don't take care of ourselves as best we can, it can get progressively harder to do so. So you have to get out of this loop by doing a little thing for yourself. Also, I know this, this was a lot of information and I know this can feel overwhelming, but if you are listening to this, you are in Boost and you're already doing uh, something for yourself, which is very valuable. And hopefully we'll go deeper than this even. And um, little things you can do have a big effect. If you can give yourself a bit of rest, whenever you need it. Don't get stressed that you miss a boost class if a nap feels more important. Take the nap. Yes. Yes, exactly. It should be taught in schools. This is, some, this is maybe, <laughs> maybe my next mission will be to attack school systems <laughs> with all that I have and to make people teach little kids how to move because now even with tablets, uh, kids are told to sit still, to listen, to take in information that's maybe not even useful for them, to learn how to uh, know things by heart and just produce text. I don't think that's the best way to use our youth when we are very open to learning new things. I think everyone should do martial arts, for instance. All kids should be rolling around in the grass. Everyone should create. Don't judge yourself if you're uh, good or bad drawer or painter or singer or dancer just do stuff make stuff uh, do what you are made to do and it doesn't need to be like a certain quality to be valuable it is valuable as kind of therapy to do things i like to sing badly for instance very very badly and i don't care it doesn't all have to be like um it doesn't have to all be like for others. A lot of the things you do are for you. And by doing that, you may inspire others to be free to be themselves also. Oh, this is going deep. But I know, I know this is important for me and I think it might be valuable for others as well. Yes, so um, a lot of happiness is stored within us and doesn't know where to go. And it will get unleashed when we let go of notions that have been put in our minds by others. Because think about it. We are being flooded with input from all sides uh, just to be a good consumer, for instance. There's a lot of money in medication, for instance. We are being sold medication to solve problems that, are not even, that don't even have to do with our bodies. They have to do maybe with uh, stress from outside or maybe the fact that we are being told to sit down or maybe because we're being told if you aren't good, then don't do it or... <laughs> or stay inside yes go in nature if you can but protect yourself also yes i post a lot of pictures of me going into the woods <laughs> which is great but there's also certain risks going on if you walk in woodland i had a tick bite for instance this uh, summer we get it a lot there's a lot of ticks but the first time in my life i got lyme disease which can be uh it can be pretty serious if you don't know that you have it and after years it can go into your nervous system and never leave your body and degenerate you. So I was pretty freaked out when I, when I realized this and uh, I have a way to protect myself but I didn't do it because I was just feeling a bit like too casual about it. So if you go into the woods, protect yourself from ticks. There's some, okay, this went in a very different direction but it's life advice. I have an oil that works really well. It's called, and it's a natural remedy that they use for horses against um, tick bites and also different animals. I know this is uh, mirrored, but it's called neem oil. It's from the neem tree, an Indian tree. It's very, very um, concentrated. So you only need a few drops. And what you do is you take a bowl of, or a plastic cup, and you put a few spoons of um, coconut oil in it. In winter, it's like coconut oil butter. And then a few drops of this in it. It smells like garlic. It smells really strongly. And you mix it up with a spoon and then you rub your skin with it. As if you have pets, be careful because they're not supposed to eat this. Don't let them lick you. Do this right before you go out in the woods. And it keeps mosquitoes, ticks, it keeps everything off because this is a kind of natural insecticide that um, 
it kills them. So, so they won't bite you, they won't hang on to you as much. And uh, so I, I used to do this religiously. And this year I got overconfident. I didn't do this for a couple of walks and then I got a tick bite and then I got Lyme disease. I was able to catch it because I got the big ring on my skin. But sometimes you don't see it, so that's my warning to you. Enjoy my forest pictures, but protect yourself if you go out in nature. As soon as it's seven degrees or warmer, so in spring, they wake, they awaken. And there's more and more of these ticks. For them, they're also sick, they can't help it. But they, they just need to bite one person and they can live for three years. And I don't even mind that, but uh, if you can get sick from it, it's better to protect yourself. So neem oil and coconut oil, mix it, rub it. It's also good for your skin. And then, uh, then you're good to go. <laughs> so that's my, my little bonus uh, health advice. I thought it's more responsible um, to give you with that. I even blogged about this neem oil, so I should take my own advice. Anyway, okay, so that's why I'm doing Boost. I'm doing it because I realized movement is necessary. It's necessary and it's needed for people to know how to move their bodies, how to release stress, how to regain lost ranges of motion, instead of drilling yourself to death with practicing technique. Yes, you can practice technique until the cows come home, but it will not get better if you're all restricted. If you release the handbrake uh, first, then you can move. It's like, otherwise it's like a car where your foot is on the brake, that's the holding, and you're giving it more and more uh, fuel, you will just burn your motor. Yes, you will burn out because you'll be practicing so much and not see any progress. And that's what happened to me. I, on top of the pain, had dance burnout because my arms were getting stiff and I didn't like how they looked on video. So I was judging myself, losing confidence and in pain. That's not a nice place. To, I'm gonna close the door because I'm, I'm yapping so much and my husband's trying to work. So the door is closed, I have my water. <laughs> yes, so, so that's uh, something also to think about. <laughs> okay, so I think, I think it's time to close this down. I've been talking for an hour. But I'll be back for another Q&A next month. And then uh, <laughs> by then I'll be gathering all the questions because I know if something is new like this, it can be so much information and so much newness that there's no questions and the questions come afterwards. So if they come, when they come, any questions, put them in the comments of this video, the Q&A, and then I will find them, answer them in the next one, in four weeks, when we are at the end of hip isolations, which will be very, very, very interesting. Oh yes, where I was is, if you do, if you want to move better, don't kill yourself with repeating isolations if it hurts or if you feel like or oh, I'm restricted then go deeper go more gentle go back to oh what's causing me to hold there might be there might be movements that you can do or maybe just the relaxation with the blanket that you can do or maybe having your spine aligned if that is blocking you in all the other ways go to the cause go deeper deeper don't be satisfied with just surface things if you can, the deeper you can go the more potential you will unleash or regain or get back because as kids, we were all, all able to eat our feet, yes? We were all flexible because we moved. And if you can keep moving, even when you're 41 like me, if you can keep moving, I believe uh, a lot more is possible than people tell us. I used to think that with 40, I would be old. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm kind of refusing to act my age just to prove that it's possible, yes? I learned points at 37, even though my feet were not flexible, my teacher, Constanze, bless her heart, said, well, if you want to learn it, you will. You will do the things that are necessary if you really want to learn it. And it was true. <laughs> but first I need to get out of pain. So if you're in pain, get out of pain. Yes, first, or give yourself whatever's needed for that. Then start getting more motion. Then you put the technique on top. If you go it from outside, you will just get frustrated. So. Allow yourself to go a few steps back and work from the inside out. The rest will take care of itself, I promise. So if upper body isolations were like oh, a bit frustrating, especially the fast ones, don't worry. By the time we are at summer, a lot will have happened. And by the time we do props, you might be amazed at all the things your body is now allowing you to do. 
Okay, that's my hope. That's my hope. And I think, I hope that if we can continue with Boost in whatever way over the long term, it might change, it might uh, develop a bit over time because as I said, it's, it's a living thing. It grows with me as I get more knowledge and it grows with the participants as I get more feedback. So it might change, but I think something in this kind of atmosphere will remain there. I want to keep doing it and I want to keep offering it. And I want to keep, at least for a big part, be part of it live. I don't want to just put it out as recordings only because I think then it's not the same. Maybe short bits uh, or something on top. But for me, this one, the, the boost is the most important work I have, uh, I have ever done in my life up till now, I think. <laughs> that maybe doesn't sound very uh, uh, modest, but I mean that it's, it's not about me. It's about um, uh, using what I know in a way that helps others. And hopefully those others then can help other others. So it's something then that, that can have a lot of positive side effects. <laughs> and it doesn't hurt anyone or anything, hopefully. And also it helps me sustain myself as a dancer because you guys are um, investing time and money and energy in this is why I can do this. So I want to thank you all for uh, trusting me with this boost and being part of it because without you guys, I wouldn't have been able to do anything. Without, without the support of uh, people, <laughs> literally, I would not be allowed to teach. So you are also palpably helping me to help others. So, <laughs> so thank you very much for, for being part of this. Yes. Okay. I think that's a good note to end this little Q&A. Thank you very, very much for being here. My, my, my apologies and not for talking so much. You know, all this talking that I do to you is freeing my husband up from my talking. So I think he's secretly a little, little bit happy that I'm going live this week. <laughs> And as you can see, this is what makes me happy. This is what uh, inspires me. And I hope to be able to do this with you for a very long time. So see you on Friday for dance. Love you all. Love you to Sandra. Sandra is one of my biggest inspirations, by the way. She's the first person that asked me to make videos of my teaching. And she offered her home studio for my DVDs. So if you ever buy a DVD from me or win one, I will do some giveaways in the coming months of my Zills uh, DVD that was in the studio, but also some others. The ones that are filmed in a beautiful yoga style, warm studio. That's Sandra's home. That's where she does the zooms from. So check it out. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Sandra. And thank you, Johanna, also for, um, for being part of this uh, Zoom uh, boost year. Uh, she, Sandra and um, Johanna, I've known them for many, many years. And it makes me really happy that I'm able to share this part of my, um, my journey, my life even with you guys, because knowing people that I love and respect and uh, working with them inspires me also. I, I make a lot of the stuff that I make for the people <laughs> that I know. For instance, the rhythm and dance uh, series that I will talk about tomorrow in the other group. I, see, I need to spread it out because I can talk a lot. I can talk forever. The rhythm and dance is inspired by Ingrid, who you will also know from uh, Boost. She was also one of my first online students once I started doing the, the Zoom classes in May. She was one of the first ones to sign up, as was Miko. And their wishes or uh, remarks are, have inspired some of the things that we are doing now. So <laughs> who's, who's doing the angry face? <laughs> or was it by accident? So anyway, anything that, um, that comes to me has its effects. And sometimes it comes out as new courses or inspiration. So thank you also for helping me to, to keep going because I like this kind of interaction. Thank you for the hearts. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I have to go now. I, I should. <laughs> I should. <laughs> you are too, Johanna. And I'm so happy, by the way, that, that the Boosties and the Dance for Children supporters are now getting to know the beauty of life that is Johanna. She is, I think, very special. And her boyfriend also. Uh, They're a great team. And uh, uh, they do so much for movement, positivity, and they make the world a brighter place. And I love getting the opportunity in this way to shout out <laughs> to the people that inspire me. And you will get more of these shout outs over time. 
and to get more people to appreciate them. So, yes, here's my appreciation to all of you boosties. Thank you for being part of my life in this way. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for investing in yourself and in this course to keep it alive. You are literally keeping it going by being here. And I'll see you soon. I'll see you on Friday for the final class of part one, upper body. And then we move on to our hips. Bye-bye.